This simple circuit can tell the difference between red and green. Notice how this LED only lights up when I hold the red paper in front of the sensor. In this video, I'll explain how this circuit works and how you can use it for a science project, for example, to detect when produce is ripe. For instructions to build the circuit, including a complete parts list and circuit diagram, check out the link in the description of this video. To explain how the circuit works, first we need to talk about color. The light from this flashlight is white. White light is full spectrum, meaning it contains all the colors of the rainbow. When we shine it at a surface, the surface may reflect some colors and absorb others. For example, this green surface reflects green light but absorbs the other colors, so our eyes only see the green light, and that's why the surface looks green. Same applies to the red surface, except it is reflecting red light and absorbing the other colors. What we see can change if we only send one color of light at a surface. For example, I'm going to put this red filter in front of my white flashlight. Since I'm only sending red light, that red light is still reflected and the red surface still looks red. However, the green surface now looks almost black because it is absorbing the red light and there is no green light for it to reflect. You can see the reverse if I use a green filter, where now the green paper still looks green, but the red paper looks black. So how is this relevant to our circuit? Instead of putting a red filter over a white light, our circuit just has a red LED that emits red light, as you can see here. We have a second part called a photoresistor. This is a type of variable resistor that is sensitive to light. The more light hits it, the lower its resistance gets, and when it's darker, its resistance will be higher. So I have a photoresistor in the circuit here, and I've taped a little cylinder of paper around it to protect it from ambient light, so it's pointing in the same direction as the LED, and when I hold something like this piece of paper in front of the LED, then most of the light that the photoresistor sees is going to be the light that's reflected back from the LED. So if I hold a red piece of paper in front of the LED and the photoresistor, a lot of that red light is going to be reflected. It's going to hit the photoresistor, and the photoresistor's resistance will go down, and the rest of the circuit that we'll talk about later is going to light the LED up. However, if I hold something else like this green piece of paper in front of the LED and the photoresistor, most of that red light is absorbed. It's not reflected back to the photoresistor, so the photoresistor's resistance is very high, and the rest of the circuit that's controlling the LED causes this indicator LED to turn off. We can demonstrate a little more about how a photoresistor works using a multimeter. Now, if you don't know what a multimeter is or how to use one, we have an excellent multimeter tutorial that you can again find linked in the description of this video. For now, just take a look at the multimeter screen, which is displaying the resistance of the photoresistor in kilo ohms. You can see that when I have it in a room here with all of the lights on, the resistance is somewhere between 3 and 4 kilo ohms. However, if I simply cover, cover the photoresistor with my finger, the resistance goes up to about 17 kilo ohms because I'm blocking most of the light from hitting it. So again, remember, less light means higher resistance, more light means lower resistance. Of course, we're not measuring ambient light in this project. As I showed earlier, we are measuring reflected light from this red LED. So I have hooked up a second photoresistor here that I have connected directly to my multimeter instead of the rest of the circuit. And you can see how when there's nothing in front of it, the resistance is pretty high, around 12 or 13 kilo ohms. And when I move this red paper in front of the LED and the photoresistor, again, more of that light is reflected back. The resistance drops to around 3 kilo ohms. And if I do it with the green paper instead, the resistance remains pretty high, around 12 or so kilo ohms. The next question then is how do we convert that changing resistance value to something that can control a separate indicator LED and turn it on and off? And we do that using a circuit called a voltage divider. A voltage divider, as the name implies, divides a voltage. So we have the source voltage from our battery pack and our voltage divider, which consists of two resistors, one is the photoresistor, and another is the potentiometer here, which is a type of adjustable resistor, they will divide the voltage and output some voltage that is lower than the battery pack voltage. So 
In this case, we have about 4.5 volts from a 3xAA battery pack. I've hooked my multimeter up to measure the output voltage of my voltage divider. And right now, with nothing in front of the photoresistor, that's about 1.4 or 1.5 volts. And don't worry if this gets a little difficult to follow in the video. Again, you can check out the written instructions for the complete circuit diagram and an explanation there, but I'm going to keep going for now. We then have the output of the voltage divider connected to the input of a transistor. This type of transistor is called a MOSFET, and the input pin is called the gate. So long story short, this is a bit of a simplification, but once the gate voltage gets high enough and exceeds something called the gate threshold voltage, the MOSFET will turn on and allow current to flow through the LED. So we can see right now when the gate voltage is only about 1.5, that is too low to turn the LED on, but when I hold the red paper in front of the LED and photoresistor, that voltage goes up to about 1.8, 1.9, and that is enough to turn on the LED. Now, you need to be careful because you will notice that this also depends on the distance to the LED and photoresistor, which makes sense if you think about it, it depends on the amount of reflected light. So if I move farther and farther away, less light is going to be reflected back to the photoresistor, and this simple circuit cannot tell the difference, for example, between a green piece of paper being held right in front of the photoresistor and a red piece of paper being held farther away. All it knows is how much light is reflected and what voltage that gets converted to. You can also adjust that baseline voltage using the potentiometer. So you want to adjust it so the LED remains off and isn't triggered by ambient light or something like a green piece of paper. So for example, if I turn this potentiometer too much, you'll see that my baseline voltage is too high, about two volts, and this LED is already on, and then holding a red piece of paper in front of it just makes it brighter, but I can't really properly turn it on and off. So you can use the potentiometer to adjust your baseline voltage, make sure that is low enough that the LED is off, and then you can use a red surface to turn the LED on and off, but it shouldn't react to other surfaces, the LED should stay off. So all of that will depend on your ambient lighting conditions and exactly what surfaces you are measuring and how much light they will reflect, which is why you will need to calibrate the circuit for your specific use case. I had mentioned back at the beginning of the video that one potential application here is agriculture, for example, looking at produce. Here I have a red apple and a green apple, and if I hold the red apple up to the circuit, we see it responds and lights up the LED, but if I hold the green apple up, it does not. Here I just have two completely different types of apples, but you can imagine that if you had something that changes from green to red as it ripens, like a strawberry or a tomato, you could use this circuit to automatically detect when it is ripe and ready to harvest. Remember, for written instructions to build this circuit, including a complete parts list, circuit diagram, and more detailed explanation of how exactly the circuit works, check out the link to the written instructions in the description of this video. For a library of over 1,200 other fun, hands-on science projects, and to find one that matches your personal interests, visit us online at www.sciencebuddies.org.